I find it inexplicably odd that fans of an industry built on its over-reliance of imitation of another group of people, coupled with its ability to trend hop, take issue when this aspect is highlighted regarding their favorite groups. Once again, I am late to the discussion, but who cares? New Jeans, an emerging K-pop group, have been garnering attention in the industry with their captivating music and striking visual concept. The group embraces a nostalgic aesthetic inspired by the late 90s and early 2000s, a trend that has been present in both K-pop and the wider music industry. Although they weren't the first to do it in K-pop nor the music industry as a whole, they definitely helped popularize this aesthetic in the mainstream. But I've observed this weird dynamic within the fandom and others alike. When it comes to attributing credit to New Jeans for popularizing the Y2K aesthetic, fans often demand exclusive recognition, disregarding the contributions of other artists exploring similar sounds and genres, predating the debut of New Jeans. However, when it's reversed and people want to credit another artist with popularizing aesthetics or styles of music that New Jeans incorporates into their artistry, it's met with a lot of pushback and opposition. Upon the release of singles Super Shy and New Jeans from their upcoming mini album, some fans drew comparisons between New Jeans and Pink Panthers. Fans took to social media to jokingly tweet remarks such as, I see why Pink Panthers brings her purse on stage, implying that New Jeans may have drawn inspiration from Pink Panthers' sound and style, reaching down in her purse for a few hits. Many media outlets point to specific artists whenever a trend takes off in the music industry, but a lot of New Jeans fans took offense to this. Although true, it was silly and lighthearted. It wasn't supposed to be made into this big deal, but many bunnies have come out in defense of New Jeans. Throughout this video, I'll say defending New Jeans, th things like that. They didn't do anything wrong is the point, but that's kind of the stance that fans are taking. We'll come back to this point later in the video. I wanted to talk about the recent resurgence of genres like garage and drum and bass, diving into their complex histories and how they've re-emerged as popular genres, not just within the West, but in K-pop as well. UK Garage first originated in the mid-1990s, drawing inspiration from soulful garage house tracks from the United States. These American records had already crossed over to the UK in the late 80s, laying the foundation for the birth of UK Garage. British producers infused their own unique style into the genre, blending elements of rave, R&B, and Jamaican sound system culture. This fusion resulted in the creation of Garage, a distinctly British sound that captured the essence of multiple genres and cultures, setting it apart from its American counterpart. Part. UK Garage is characterized by its syncopated 4-4 beats, shuffled rhythms, soulful melodic vocals, chopped up samples, and heavy use of sub bass. The genre gained popularity in the UK club scene and became a significant part of the broader UK dance music culture. It has influenced subsequent genres such as grime, dubstep, and bassline, and continues to evolve with new subgenres and variations. The genre experienced a decline in popularity for several reasons, including the shifting musical landscape, the emergence of new genres, changes in musical taste and trends among listeners, and the commercialization and mainstream success of pop-oriented garage acts, which led to the delusion of the genre's authenticity and underground appeal, alienating some of its core fan base. Garage was a primarily black scene. Some artists of the time attracted urban, lower class audiences because of their lyrics. As expected, politics and the media played a role in shaping public perceptions and narratives around garage music. Negative portrayals and stereotypes associated with the genre, such as links to crime or unruly behavior, reinforced class divisions and led to marginalization within certain segments of society. Club promoters and licensees of events were required to fill out a risk assessment form known as Form 696. This form asked that names, stage names, private addresses, and phone numbers of DJs and artists involved be listed, as well as a description of the style of music being played and its target audience. Initially, it asked for ethnic groups most likely to attend the performance, but this was later revised and omitted. Over time, radios and clubs stopped giving the genre opportunities. Clubs also began enforcing dress codes, and 
intended to encourage people to make an effort while keeping trouble out. These policies and mandates were criticized for their potential discrimination against black artists and the targeting of musical styles favored by people of color, specifically black and Asian teenagers. This further contributed to the decline in popularity as garage music became stigmatized and associated with specific social groups. All of these factors combined contributed to the decline in popularity of UK garage, although it still maintains a dedicated following and continues to influence contemporary music production. Drum and bass is a genre of electronic dance music that originated in the United Kingdom in the early 1990s. It is characterized by fast break beats, heavy bass lines, and complex rhythms. The genre emerged as a fusion of various styles including jungle, techno, and breakbeat and has since evolved into its own distinct sound. Drum and bass typically features rapid syncopated drum patterns, deep and powerful bass lines, and a range of sampled and synthesized sounds. It is known for its energetic and high tempo nature, often incorporating elements of jazz, funk and reggae. Drum and bass has a strong presence in both club and underground scenes. It continues to evolve with new subgenres and variations. The first drum and bass single to go number one wasn't until 2012 with Hot Right Now by DJ Fresh featuring Rita Ora. The scene is dominated by a small group of record labels as major companies showed little interest in the genre. However, when BMG Rights Management acquired Ram, a record label that specializes in the genre, it has seen a significant growth in exposure. The intense and high nature of drum and bass limited its accessibility to a wider audience. The rapid beats and intricate rhythms that define the genre can be challenging for some listeners to connect with on a mainstream level as compared to more straightforward and accessible genres. Additionally, numerous subgenres and factions within the genre makes it harder to maintain a cohesive and unified presence, potentially diluting its impact and appeal. Still, both genres have experienced a few resurgences in popularity over the years, with an updated and cleaner sound. However, it is now evident that a full-scale revival or renaissance is taking place. The current resurgences of these genres feel more substantial and impactful than before. But why is that? Why were none of the previous revivals as successful as this one? The global impact of the COVID-19 pandemic resulted in widespread emotional, mental, and physical distress, creating a pervasive sense of despair. In challenging times, music often emerges as a powerful source of solace and escape for millions of individuals worldwide. This has long been a characteristic of popular music. Artists have adapted to this social zeitgeist, declaring a need for a dance revival. The release of up-tempo music within these genres by the biggest music acts in the industry provide a much-needed soundtrack to the times. For example, the rise of EDM and party anthems in the late 2000s is often attributed to the financial crisis of 2008. With the COVID-19 pandemic, nostalgia took over the industry. The years of 2020 and 2021 saw the rise of disco-infused pop music and 80s-inspired synth-pop track, which can be connected to the current state of the world. However, the process of discovering and engaging with music has undergone significant changes over time. Traditional music programs like MTV have been eclipsed by the rise of social media platforms. In recent years, TikTok has revolutionized the way we explore and consume music. With its vast user base and viral nature, TikTok has directly influenced the success and popularity of genres and artists in recent years. It has disrupted the traditional pop star formula, allowing emerging artists and unconventional sounds to flourish, breathing life into a new musical era. In late 2020, Pink Panthers gained traction after uploading a snippet of her song to TikTok. The platform's algorithm allowed her music to spread like wildfire, reaching a large global audience and enabling her songs to become some of the most popular sounds on the app. Pink Panthers has crafted a recipe for success that involves blending various genres and incorporating samples from the 90s and early 2000s. This innovative fusion combined with her angelic soft voice and ability to create infectious melodies helped her develop a distinctive sound that she aptly refers to as new nostalgic. By seamlessly combining elements from different musical eras, Pink Panthers creates a sonic landscape that simultaneously pays homage to the past while offering a fresh experience. Other artists also helping the genres gain momentum that I like include Piri and Tommy, Vier Cloud, Take Van, Naya Archives, Shy Girl, 
Erica De Kessier, Rochelle Jordan, and more. Although she doesn't want to be boxed into one musical genre, media outlets often point to Pink Panthers when explaining the resurgence of genres like drum and bass and garage in mainstream music. She, along with her contemporaries, have without a doubt helped popularize these musical styles, serving as accessible entry points to the harsher musical sounds they're referencing, especially in the US where drum and bass and garage never fully lodged into the mainstream. Therefore, many people are experiencing these sounds for the first time. Personally, the first time I heard a garage track was through Georgia Smith's collab with Predator for On My Mind, and we should all be streaming. Anyway, I do believe that Pink Panthers especially has become an interest and inspiration for industries across the globe, most notably in K-pop. K-pop has always had a remarkable ability to imitate and emulate the trends of its time, allowing it to remain as a dynamic and ever-evolving force in the music industry. After 2020, K-pop's genre adoption has become more progressive and expansive. Numerous groups have ventured into new musical territories, exploring sounds and genres that they might have hesitated to explore in the past or wouldn't have touched with a 10-foot pole. The use of the drum and bass in garage genres in K-pop is rapidly spreading. From underground artists like Suman, Iso, and Baby Yana to mid-tier and mainstream stream songs like Ives Hypnosis, Chowal by Triple S, and Zero Base One's recent debut, a noticeable trend has emerged in the industry. Although the genres have existed in K-pop for some time, the songs were often few and far between, and in the case of drum and bass, sometimes weren't pure or a core element to the song. Sully's Dorothy, Shiny's Prism, Twice's Rainbow, EXID's Too Good To Me, TXT's Roller Coaster, and Yaren Beck's Bubbles and Mushrooms are just some of the few drum and bass or garage tracks we've got in K-pop before the trend took off. Another genre gaining new attention is Jersey Club and Bounce thanks to viral TikTok sounds from artists like Cookie Kawaii, Lil Uzi Vert, Drake, Koi Lee Ray, and many others. Additionally, Miami bass will never go out of style because of Tinashe, but also because of the collab between Dua Lipa and Megan Thee Stallion. Anyway, New Jeans began dipping their toes into all of these genres late last year, starting with the release of Ditto, followed by Zero the next year, and their newest singles they released last week. All of this leads to the Twitter discourse I mentioned earlier. When it was announced that Erica de Kessier would be producing for New Jeans, I was overcome with so much joy. Not only would the music be good, but it would be a great opportunity for Erica to grow her fan base the same way that Isabella Love Story grew her fan base. I didn't expect the songs to go down the garage and house genre because Erica was attached to it. Her first album, Essentials, never strayed far from the 90s R&B she was inspired by, but her second album, Sensational, creates a unique sound and dreamy atmosphere as she blends pop and electronic style over lush R&B production with her sultry vocals, drawing inspiration from the sounds of the 90s and this time, the early 2000s. The reason I bring up Erica and delve into her music a bit is because when the New Jane songs were released, there were fans who defended the comparisons to Pink Panthers by referencing Erica. They argued that true music enthusiasts, true music listeners and hearers would recognize that Erica had been active in the music scene before Pink Panthers and had already explored this sonic territory. This defense irritated me because Erica remains relatively underground, with most of her songs accumulating fewer than 1 million Spotify plays. At the time I'm recording this, she has less than 300,000 monthly listeners. For reference, even Everglow has been able to maintain 2 million monthly listeners despite being on hiatus for almost two years. It's likely that the majority of people had not heard her name or music prior to her association with the New Jeans project. It's even more likely that you bitches don't know what you're talking about at all. It is absolutely incorrect to attribute New Jeans' recent exploration of genres like drum and bass and garage solely to Erica's influence. Mother has dabbled in this genre before, yes, most notably on tracks like Drama, Busy, and Call Me Anytime, but those tracks are more experimental, atmospheric, sensual, and mid-tempo. Too busy, I wrote you twice last night, wish that I had what you loved about me. The one track a bit more upbeat and fun using that loosely is her collaboration with Miro Masa. 
who is behind some of Pink Panthers' biggest hits. Additionally, the Powerpuff Girls collaboration presents another perspective. The Powerpuff Girls theme song incorporates drum and bass. Genres like drum and bass and jungle have found a prominent place in the world of cartoons and video games. These genres often accompany action-packed sequences, intense chase scenes, or moments of high energy and excitement. The fast-paced and intricate beats of drum and bass, along with the deep bass lines and atmospheric elements of jungle, create a sense of urgency, adrenaline, and heightened tension in the audiovisual experience. Pink Panthers has explored this sound and style more than Erica has. If this was solely derivative of Erica, New Jeans' release would look and sound a whole lot different. Now that's not to say that elements of Erica aren't present in the song. You can definitely feel her within the lyrics and a bit in their vocal delivery, but everything else simply points to Powerpuff Girls and most importantly, the pink print. But anyway, that's all. Bye!